Hi everyone, this is my last video for chapter three, and I'm going to take a really complex topic that's really important, and I really I want you to understand. Um, I'm going to make it really, I'm going to boil it down to its absolute simplest um, details. This is something that, again, you'll probably expand on this when you take, if you take anatomy and physiology, and if you take microbiology, you'll get this again. So this is one of those topics. If you can remember kind of the basics, you're going to build on it possibly in other courses. So um, this section talks about metabolism. And it tells you right here, uh, you know, we all have some feeling for what metabolism is. We say we have a fast metabolism or slow, but to a scientist, when we're talking about metabolism, um, we, we get thinking down to the cellular level, and it says it's metabolism is the sum of all the chemical reactions that occur within the body. And um, so metabolism, all the chemical reactions that occur in the body. And one of the reactions or the major reaction, kind of a central reaction that we we learn about when we learn about metabolism is something called cellular respiration and um, we're gonna I'm gonna talk a little bit about that and how hopefully you'll get a little bit of an idea what that is um, but cellular respiration is a metabolic pathway and what they're trying to show you here is there's some kind of molecule that starts this metabolic pathway and enzyme one works on that molecule now hopefully you remember that um, enzymes are proteins and they're involved in metabolic pathways or involved in metabolism. So we have this molecule that enzyme 1 works on and it may, creates a product. And that product becomes what we call the substrate for enzyme 2. And enzyme 2 converts that into something else. So now I have a new product. And um, that becomes a substrate for enzyme 3 and enzyme three creates a product. So we call that a metabolic pathway when we have enzymes working in a series to change a something, a starting product to an end product, or starting molecule to an end product. And um, there's a video right here that shows you a biochemical pathway, and I think it's really good. So it's just a minute long, so check that out. Um, I'm not gonna do this feedback inhibition here. Oh no, here's the video right here. I like this one. The uh, Oh, no, I'm sorry. Excuse me. The metabolic pathway here. You don't have to do the feedback inhibition. Um, anyway, one of those two is the metabolic pathway. Okay, so there's a lot more details about enzymes, and probably in another class you're going to learn about that if you haven't already. But what I want to get um, talking about is just the concept of cellular respiration. And the reason why we're talking about this right now is because this is something that happens primarily in the mitochondria. And so we're talking about uh, cellular organelles and mitochondria are really important organelles. So when you learned in the past, or even you know if this is the first time if you learned this, the function of mitochondria in cells, you learned that mitochondria are called the powerhouse of the cell. And here it says, just as a powerhouse burns fuel to produce electricity, the mitochondria convert chemical energy of glucose into chemical energy called ATP. And so the idea is what the mitochondria do, well, let's kind of back up a little bit. We eat food. Hopefully you had something recently and your stomach is full. And what happens is our digestive system digests, digests that food, but a lot of that food's converted into glucose and what by our digestive system and other molecules. But in the simplest form, um, glucose is the, the sugar we got from our food. Well, what the mitochondria do is they take the energy from glucose and they convert it into ATP. And ATP is an energy carrying molecule. And why this is important is that um, our cells cannot use our food or glucose for energy. They can only use ATP. And I try to think of it like, um, you know, glucose has a lot of energy in it, but it's kind of foreign money to our cells. Our cells can only use 
um, you know, American money or whatever. So think about it like, you know, different forms of money. We can convert one, uh, you know, we convert French money into American money, or we can convert um, Canadian money into American money. And that's what cells are doing. Glucose has a lot of energy, but um, our cells actually use ATP. So the metabolic pathway that takes energy from our food, particularly glucose, and converts that energy into ATP is called cellular respiration. Okay, and so this section gives you a lot of details about how that happens, but primarily happens in the mitochondria. And that's why we say the mitochondria are the powerhouses of the cell. They convert food energy into ATP, a form of energy that our cells can use. And there's a lot more details. And here we're going to fly through this. We're going to pass all this. But um, here's a section that says cellular respiration, the metabolic pathway that allows mitochondria to take glucose and make ATP, is something, is a pathway that we call aerobic. And what that means is for cellular respiration to occur, we need oxygen. So we all know that we breathe. Why do we breathe? We breathe for cellular respiration. We breathe to keep cellular respiration going in every one of our cells. And so, or almost everyone, not our red blood cells, but other cells. Um, so our most of our cells are doing cellular respiration. And, um, and that oxygen is being used to convert our food into ATP. And here's something else about it. When we use oxygen and we make ATP through cellular respiration, um, we make a relatively large amount of ATP. So from one molecule glucose, we make about 36 to 38 ATP. And the reason why I bring that up is because our cells can also do something called fermentation. And I know you've heard of that when you ferment and make alcohol um, or vinegar or things like that. And the process of fermentation is an anaerobic process where we don't use oxygen, but it's still a process, a metabolic process in which we make ATP. Now the, um, our cells prefer to use aerobic or cellular respiration to make ATP because we can get 36 or 38 ATPs from one glucose. In fermentation, we only get two ATPs from one glucose. And the place where you know about this in the human body is if you're uh, maybe doing squats and you're doing squats, doing squats, and then what happens? Your The big muscles of your legs start to burn. And um, you can try to keep going, it kind of hurts, but um, but eventually you're going to have to stop. When your muscles start to burn, it's a sign that your muscles are doing fermentation. What's happening is you're working your muscles, you're running out of oxygen so they can no longer do cellular respiration to make ATP to fuel your muscles. So what do they do? They switch to fermentation, an anaerobic process where no oxygen is being used, and they convert um, and they, in the process of making ATP, they make lactate, which you might know as lactic acid. So um, probably most of us know that when your muscles are burning, you're producing lactic acid. So what I'm trying to tell you is that's a sign that you ran out of oxygen in those muscles. And instead of using cellular respiration to make ATP, you're using fermentation, absence of oxygen. Now, the problem with that is you only make a little bit of ATP per glucose. So your muscles wear out quickly once you um, start fermenting, but at least it allows you to keep them going a little bit longer than if you just stopped um, functioning altogether. So that's what I want you to remember.